and gentlemen, please once again, with a big round of applause and energy, welcome Mr. Mirza on stage. Sir, I request you to please come and join me on stage. And thank you so much for being a lovely audience. I think I have. Yes. Is, is this on or this is on? So a very good afternoon. Uh, she said 10 years is actually 11 years, but I think I have too many mics on. So which one do we turn off? Let me turn this one off. So you can still hear me? Good. So I think in 20 or 25 minutes you're going to have lunch, so I don't want to bother you too much with, with a little bit of stuff about, uh, about me and about what we have built over the last 11 years. I have the pleasure to be here, 20, 25 minutes. So what can I put and what can I bring across in 25 minutes? It can't be that much. So let's start with me. A little bit about me, where are the slides? OK, let's see whether that is working. OK, so that is moving to the side. So let's talk about me, first of all. So who am I? I mean, my name is Oliver Mirza. It's a difficult name combination. Some people don't know, you know, where's the Oliver coming from? Am I Indian? Am I not Indian? It's a bit of a difficult question. Well, I'm a so-called hybrid. I'm half Indian by blood and half German, but by nationality, I'm German. So I was born in Germany. I grew up in Europe, in Germany. Um, and when you see the slide, I've put a little bit about what I experienced over the last 51 years. Uh, yeah, probably let's start um, in the middle. Let's see whether that is also working here. Yeah, here. So I grew up in Europe. I'm German. I grew up in Germany. But I also lived in the US for two years. I studied in Germany. I'm a nutritionist by profession. But then I moved to the US. I studied business. And uh, so I also have a master's in business. And then now I'm in India. So you can say I lived on three continents, I worked on three continents, and, and I'm a nutritionist, and I hold a business degree. Uh, and w over the last 30 years, I worked in different industries, but food is my passion. I always worked in food. So I started as a pastry chef. So I'm a pastry chef, if you want so. So I know how to make all these little macarons. That's what I took as a symbol. I did this for five years before I actually started studying. I first did a pastry chef and then went to university. And then I worked in two areas, which is the sweet area, yeah, the biscuit area in Cambly, that's a Swiss brand, and also in the fruit gum industry. And then I joined Heinz Ketchup in Germany, was in charge of Germany, Austria, Switzerland. I uh, was there for a few years, and then I moved on to a honey brand, Europe's number one honey brand called Langnese. And then before I came to India 11 years ago, I was eight years with Barilla. That's an Italian pasta brand. We do no, V, so the V still sometimes slips in. They, or we used to do pasta and pasta sauces all across Europe. So that's the world I, I used to live in, I still live in. And I'm in India with my family. I have... Uh, five girls, a big one and four smaller ones. So uh, we all live in, in Delhi. For the last 10 years, the first year I lived in Mumbai. Um, and I also have a hobby. I think these hobbies we can only afford in India as a European. So we hold some goats and I do my own goat cheese. That's why I use the symbol of goat cheese. That's about me. And then let's talk a bit about what I'm here for. Well, I came, I moved from Germany to India for this particular job because I was asked by the Oetker Group, can you build up the Dr. Oetker India business? So when I came here in 2008, the business was zero. Turnover was zero. And we looked at the business, I looked at the business, came here, I was the first person uh, on the payroll, if you want so, on Dr. Oetker India. 
Um, and how did we look at the business? We looked at it and said, wow, India and Europe have similar size, but although similar size, it's like day and night. The differences are so vast, not only the differences in food, so many differences that, and I keep on saying this, I probably also say this during the presentation a few times, we need to unlearn uh, what, we, what we used to do in Europe, or what I used to do for 40 years, I had to unlearn everything and start learning new. So when you see alone the food part, and we're here because we're a food brand, in the European world, it's the world of sandwiches, it's the world of burgers, it's the world of pasta, whereas the Indian world, 10 years ago and even now, is not yet that kind of world. But we're moving towards it. So that's the similar size. Yeah? When you see, when you look at India in terms of size, it's just massive. Belgium, a small country, is just as big as Kerala. Or you look at the UK, is as big as UP. And then we're here in India, uh, and looking at it at one country is almost impossible. But it is the country of opportunities for Western comfort food, and that's why we looked at it. Now, the Dr. Oetker Global pedigree is, is also in comfort food. And some of you, I just spoke with a gentleman from Volkswagen, some of you who have been to Europe, they know the brand, they know what we do. So what we do is, we do only Western comfort food. It is a bit misleading that there's a doctor in the brand, because we do comfort food, not healthy food. But the doctor and the brand makes it a bit more healthy, so we're doing fine. So when you see on the left side, we do a lot around pizza, uh, we do subs, we do deep dish, we do toasties. So we are in the world of burgers, pizza, subs, deep dish for home consumption. Not for the restaurant consumption, but even when you look at the restaurant consumption, if there's anyone from Domino's in the room, you please forgive me for the next sentence. Uh, yeah, we, Domino's worldwide does 1.5 million pizzas a day. We do 5 million a day. So from that kind of scale, Domino's is a nobody. But we are very strong in home consumption, whereas Domino's is on the delivery side. And also, of course, eat in. Uh, so that's what we do. And on the other side, we are in the cake world, which we said, let's not look at the cake world in India. Let's look at the other world. And that's what we did. So we focused on our core competency, and we thought it's easy to just bring it here. But of course, it was not as easy. Uh, and the position was taken in the out-of-home market already, so we need to look at the in-home market. And that's what we did. So we looked at the biggest taste maker inside these products, which is mayonnaise. So when you look at a sandwich, the biggest taste maker is mayonnaise. You look at the a toasty, it's mayonnaise. Even in a pizza, sometimes, is uh, a cheese mayonnaise inside or in a burger. So we looked at this market and said, wow, let's do this. And when you see this picture, this is the multiple usage of, of mayonnaise across the world. You see it in, you have it in wraps. Japanese love it on their pizza. Germans love it on French fries because as a German, I believe it's more healthy than ketchup, but we are not in competition with ketchup. We use it as decor. We use it to bind together vegetables. We use it UK. In the UK, it's the favorite sandwich spread or we use it simply as a butter replacer. That all is the know-how that we have, but when we came to India, we realized nobody knows this. Nobody knows any of this. There's only one, 10 lakh people in India who know what a mayonnaise is. They buy the mayonnaise when we started this. Most of the people knew there is a white sauce inside the burger, but that that is a mayonnaise, nobody knew. Yeah? Or that there is something creamy inside a sandwich, they also knew, but that that is a mayonnaise, people simply did not know. So it's a key ingredient in comfort food, but people didn't know. So that means if you come with a know-how that everybody knows everything, of course that is not working. So we had to unlearn that and 
learn new and start educating what the word mayonnaise means. Even when you come with the thinking of, yeah, it's the biggest condiment on the planet, and it is, mayonnaise is the biggest condiment on the planet, it's worth nothing if people don't know what it is. So when you look at this, this chart, the ketchup is not the king of American condiments, it's mayonnaise, because in the US, mayonnaise is a 2 billion USD market, whereas ketchup is only 800 million. And when you look at, uh, that's an article from 2014, but even in the UK, now mayonnaise sells out ketchup, outsells ketchup in the UK for the first time because they look at mayonnaise alone, and mayonnaise has 80% fat over there. But even when you, uh, when, that's now the mayonnaise segment, but when you look at dressings, mayonnaise dressings, if you put this together, it was always number one. So also in the UK it's bigger, but when we came, and when we started in 2008, Mayonnaise was a nine crore market against ketchup being 500, 600 crores. So it's nothing against ketchup, although globally it's the number one. So except for some 10 lakh people scattered across the country in India, nobody knew what it was. And even a year, even a year later, two years later, I live in Delhi and I went to Vishal Megamart which is, uh, some of you might know, it's a, it's a, it's a hypermarket in, in Mahipalpur here, and not far from here. So I went to, I went to uh, Vishal Megamart to check how they place the mayonnaise. So I went inside the store, I couldn't find any mayonnaise. So I asked the store, where, where do you have mayonnaise? Where's mayonnaise? So then the guy looked at me and he didn't understand me. So I asked him again, where is mayonnaise? And I, no answer, a blunt face. So then I thought, okay, maybe it's because of my German accent, so I have to try myself a bit in Hindi. So I asked, you know, mayonnaise, hey? So the guy again looked at me and said, no, blunt. And then finally they brought a guy and showed his, yeah, mayonnaise, it was Mahesh. <laughs> so, you know, between mayonnaise and Mahesh, I think it's a big difference, but it didn't seem to be for Vishal Megamart. Yeah, and that is actually the problem, that people don't know what is mayonnaise, neither the store people know, a lot of store uh, managerial people do, are not aware of what it is, and even consumers. So we are on a mission to make people understand what it is, to create relevance, because it is a relevant ingredient across the world. So let's see which press, this one I have to press. So how do we do this? Again, learn, unlearn. So how did we do this? Yeah, because I think it's no secret, by now the market is no longer 9 crores, it is now 200 crores. In 10 years we, we, we pushed it to 200 crores, and it's one-fifth of the size now of ketchup, and in some retail chains it actually reached a level of 50% of ketchup. Ketchup is not a, an enemy, ketchup is just for us the benchmark, because the category should be as big as ketchup, as globally it's the biggest category. So what did we do? We deep dived into mayonnaise. We, we tried to understand everything about mayonnaise because we thought everybody knows everything, but if nobody knows anything, then let's first, first understand what the people know. So we deep dived into mayonnaise, and when we started, there was just mayonnaise with attributes. So you see this on the picture. There's a mayonnaise, eggless mayonnaise. We acquired that brand in 2008 and there was a burger mayonnaise. You can see from the green dot, it's actually eggless and it's also vegetarian, but the pack does not say so. And you also see dyed eggless, so eggless is mentioned, but that is a confusing term for consumer, consumers. We still get questions whether eggless means less egg or it's egg-free. So people don't understand eggless. Uh, and if it's eggless, okay, there's no egg inside. Is there maybe gelatin inside or some other animal ingredients? So we are still being asked these questions from time to time. So that is how we started. And we ourselves gave only attributes like eggless. And then when we started, we did a relaunch before our first advertising phase. We, I would say maybe by coincidence, I mean, we can always say we did all this intentional because we're all marketing guys, but sometimes things also happen by coincidence and out of luck. 
So we renamed one SKU into mayonnaise veg, eggless. All others were called, you know, burger mayonnaise eggless, garlic mayonnaise eggless, but one we just by coincidence, we named it mayonnaise veg eggless. And then we, we did a testing of the TV spot and we realized that when we did the TV spot for burger mayonnaise eggless and for tandoori mayonnaise eggless and for mayonnaise veg eggless, on that mayonnaise veg eggless, consumers have understood in eight seconds that this is a vegetarian product. But on the other spots, they, it took them 22 seconds because we showed them a 30 second commercial. But, you know, Solina, I'm happy to see you here as well from OMD. Uh, our media agency. When we then later started airing 20 second commercial and the consumer only understands after 20 seconds what the message is, one of the messages that's a vegetarian product, that we have a problem. That this insight gave us the confidence to say, let's forget all this, we create a new category. That means there was mayonnaise as a category and we now said, okay, there is mayonnaise with certain attributes and there is veg mayonnaise as a category. So we created a new category called veg mayonnaise. And that is still there today. So when you see the mayonnaise, which was there in 2008, it was nine crore market. 50% was egg mayonnaise. The other 50% was vegetarian eggless mayonnaise. Now this four and a half crore have grown to 20 crores, but the vegetarian part is 180. That means that's where the major driver is coming from. We took this insight and said, eggless is not so relevant. People want to hear veg. And let's not make veg a product attribute. We create a category called veg mayonnaise. So when you go out on the shelves today, there is mayonnaise as a category, but there's also veg mayonnaise as a category. And that is actually the biggest category. Sometimes you don't realize that mayonnaise is still a category. Quite often there's only one or two products because the overall market is only so small. And this is the beauty about building this category. You take an insight and scale it up and, 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 don't, and, and dare to scale it up because a lot of people would just take that insight and attach it to one SKU. No, you need to have the guts to do this massively across, across the range and that's what we did. So we opened up a new category called veg mayonnaise and we moved all eggless products under the veg mayonnaise nomenclature and this resulted in the end in a, in a, in a, in a market size of a, a bit more than 200 crores. And we have, we have grown from zero, you can say, up to we have acquired a business, a retail business in 20, 2008 was uh, 12 crores. We are now 250 crore company. Major driver is the mayonnaise, the veg mayonnaise. And then we pushed and started our journey on building penetration, driving penetration, but you, most of you are marketeers, so I'm not talking anything new. We created a nozzle pack, 100 gram for 35 rupees, but we did not only push the price point, we, we have drawn the price point with the mayonnaise through the nozzle onto the toast spread. It's called visual impression. We burn it into the heads kind of message. And we've done this, and we launched this SKU. It is this small SKU. We launched it in 2015, and by now it's our strongest SKU. Yeah, and uh, that is what it is. Take it up and massively scale it up. Of course, distribution also played a major role in here. I'll come to this in a minute. I think I have another two more slides. Um, but it is about driving penetration so that more and more people understand what mayonnaise is. Why they understand, I'll come to this. I've not yet shared that. But that, that veg mayonnaise as a category is going into the smaller households as well and into deeper households from an SEC ABC classification as well. How did we do this? We, we created relevance through education. So we, we are saying that we only focus on education and we're doing this through a TV spot in which when you look at the TV spot, all we do is we instruct somebody how to make a sandwich, and it's not we, so Nali Bendry is doing it for us, uh, that she shows how to make a sandwich, how to not have an ugly sandwich or a boring sandwich, how to have a yummy, tasty, 
fancy, creamy, juicy sandwich. So we're focusing very much on appetite appeal and education on how to make a sandwich. As well, we show burger as a spot, tandoori, wrap as a spot, and also macaroni. In macaroni, for example, we've gone ahead. Yeah? So we're showing how to make a white sauce from mayonnaise. So white sauce is a basic ingredient into a mayonnaise. Uh, mayonnaise is, of course, veg mayonnaise is a basic ingredient into the white sauce. That's what we're showing. And we're showing this on TV as one spot, but we also supported this on the ground with a promotion where consumers can actually do macaroni with white sauce. So all pure education. We're not focusing on you get 10 rupee for free or you know get, I don't know, let's uh, stick something to it because somebody gives it to us for free. We're focusing on educative promotions. So that's what we're doing. And with this, we create relevance. And with this, we have achieved what we have achieved. So how does the future look? For us, focus on the consumer. And I think it's normal, but a lot of people focus on the competition. We focus only on the consumer because the consumer pays our salaries. We, yeah, it's called consumer centricity. We're not looking left and right what the competition does. Of course, we are a leader, so it's a bit easier to say so, because as a leader, you don't have to focus so much on left and right. But as a leader in this category, we have a 70% market share. Um, we, we're focusing on the consumer, but even, yeah, I'm mentioning 70% market share, we're not focusing so much on the market share. Because the moment we focus mentally on the market share, then I'm focusing on the competition. Because I need to stick to 70% market share, I need to make, make sure that I stay number one and not number two, so then the competition becomes the focus. We focus on the consumer. Run as fast as you can to reach the consumer uh, is our focus, and with that, we have begun our journey and we will continue our journey. We also monitor trends locally, globally, and that means we look at Nielsen data. We pushed Nielsen to give us data. Nielsen before had no Nielsen panel for Mayonnaise. We are the first customer for Nielsen, and it's a pain cleaning up the data. I'm so sorry for you guys from Nielsen, but it's real pain. Um, but yes, the data, once you analyze, yeah, it is about the consumer, and it's about how, what segments they choose, what segments are growing, but also how is the, how, what are the trends locally and globally. And you see that every few years there's a trend, it's low fat, and then sometimes it's the Atkins trend, right now from Europe, very strongly coming over low sugar. So there's a low sugar trend coming in, in, in many variants. Yeah, sugar is, the, is now the bad guy. But let's see how long this will last. Um, so we focus on trends and then cater to these trends. We have an olive oil mayonnaise with Italian olive oil from, from Basso, or diet mayonnaise, because we also see a health trend coming up. Uh, we focus on quality. Quality is the best recipe, is our global slogan. And we do not compromise on quality. Never. We rather exit the segment. And yes, we have the most modern sauces plant in Asia. We recently, uh, in, in 2017, March, we opened the plant. We have gone ahead, invested massively into this plant. We have a new technology in this plant. Does anyone know how to lift an airplane? Why would the airplane go in the air? Anyone has any idea? Huh? Why and see? It has to do with the, with the ankle and the air streams below the airplane. So with that, you create enough energy for the airplane to, to take off. That is what has that to do with mayonnaise, because we introduced aero technology in our plant to make mayonnaise. So usually, not sure whether you know how to make a mayonnaise. It's simple. You just have a little bit of water and some cool, cool mixture and oil, and you need to blend it. But if you do this at home in a mixer, you put everything in a bowl, and you always need to run with the mixer after the liquid. So it takes a lot of time. And it's not so efficient. But if you do it like an airplane, you create ankles in the mixer and in the equipment that the mayonnaise always comes to you and we are able to make a batch of mayonnaise if everything is inside 1.5 tons in 15 seconds. Yeah, that is aero technology. So we went ahead and invested in such a technology 
to, um, to be ahead of the time. Because why is this good? Why does it pay off for the consumer? We will use less additives. We will use less stabilizers in it. So in the, eventually, because the world is moving towards all natural, this is what it will lead to, and our technology will address these points. So that's the, the sources plan, many sources. And then anyone has any guess what, what 489 means? Lauda? FDA? No, no, no FDA. It's the town presence. We are present in 489 towns. And as per Nielsen, yeah, the, the brand, success of a brand depends 75% 75, 75 of the distribution. So we are right now present in 489 towns. And we are, of course, expanding our town presence beyond these towns so that we go in smaller towns, especially in north and in south. We have a clear matrix on which towns we go to. But right now, we are in 489 towns. Is it important to be in 489 towns? Probably not for right now. But for the future, and the gro stronger growth, of course, comes also from smaller towns. All towns grow double digit, uh, but the smaller towns sometimes grow triple digit. That's about it from my side. Anyone has questions? I've been promised uh, you're not going to be cut off. Usko mat katega, somebody said. So, anyone has questions? I think I stuck to the time, right? Yeah, 30 minutes. Somebody has a question. Do we have a mic for this uh, for the lady? First table left. And I always carry along a mayonnaise, even when I go to the customer. I carry along a product because sometimes we forget what we are working for. You sit with the buyer. You sit with anybody. But yeah, if you work for washing machines, you can't take it along. Well, probably you could, but it's a little bit difficult. But if you have a product. That is what we celebrate. Yes. Hi, my name is Vaidehi. I just wanted to ask, uh, while wedge mayonnaise really works in India, have you all used these ideas for Europe and other markets also? Like a lot of time the trend comes from Europe to India. Has this time been a different where the trend from India has gone anywhere else? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. But what we, so uh, not yet, but what is happening is the, in Europe, Europe and US as a market, have a stronger consumption of vegetarian mayonnaise, that is true, uh, but it's coming from niche brands and uh, it's difficult for them, very difficult for them, because the law, the European law as well as the US law does not allow the mayonnaise to be called mayonnaise. In Germany, for example, you need to put in 80% of oil to be al allowed to be called a mayonnaise and a mandatory uh, protein content of 5% or more. So egg is mandatory. The moment you take out egg, it's no longer allowed to be called a mayonnaise. That's why that, this trend has not happened from India outward. But we have a lot of inquiries from other countries. So we have shipped, for example, to Malaysia, where the law does allow. And we have inquiries from other countries where we could probably also ship to. Uh, but honestly, we, we are not focusing so strongly in our group uh, on pushing this out because then we're busy with exports. And once you're in exports, that's a, that's a Herculean task. We prefer to build penetration in India, but, yeah, but still the trend outside is small, but it's also growing double digit. So the other markets like a US market or European markets in mayonnaise is growing one or 2%. And the uh, vegetarian one, more vegan actually, is, is growing uh, 10%. So there you see the other mayonnaise coming down a bit and those going up a bit. So there's a bit of a trend towards vegan and vegetarian food also uh, yeah, in Europe. Uh, when I, uh, let's say when I, uh, 20 years ago, I'd say 99% of the Germans were meat eaters. Um, and today you have 10% vegetarians and 1% vegans. Any other question? Yes. Uh, can we pass on the mic to the young lady here? on this table. Hi, uh, my name is Geetika. And 
uh, my question is to you and in fact to all the marketers here is uh, what's one key to keep the customer or the consumer loyal? Loyal? Loyal, like repeated customers should be there for the brand, right? Irrespective of the competition around and uh, we want to give the best quality to the customer. We want to give, uh, have a different marketing strategy to uh, bring our products and brand. What is one key factor which keeps the consumer loyal to the brand? A, a very tough question, but I, I can I, I answer only for our brand, of course. Uh, for us, what it is for us is that we offer value for money across the world. When you buy our pizza, for example, uh, a pizza would be two euro. Uh, in a, on a retail chef at a, at, a, at a retailer, so 160 rupees would be a pizza when you pick it up from a retail chef. So that's our philosophy that we focus on value for money. Value for money means what, what do you get and what do you pay for it and what do, you, what do you get out of it. So when you see what we're doing, when we acquired, I've, seen you, I've shown you some pictures uh, from the brand in the year 2008 and currently. When you see what, what we acquired as a brand in 2008, it was a 300 gram pack of mayonnaise. The price was 72 rupees for 300 gram mayonnaise, eggless mayonnaise. I'm coming to the question, to the answer. And today, the price is 75 rupees for 275 gram, and we're 10 years later. So we've increased the price in 10 years by three rupees MRP and decreased the weight by 25 gram, and that in 10 years. That means what we do is we do the utmost best. Literally, I can say I put a gun at everybody's head internally and say, you better find the efficiencies because we want to pass on all efficiencies to the consumer so that the consumer develops trust and reliability with our brand, apart from the brand building, so that a consumer today would know if tomorrow we increase the price, we have reached such a threshold that we can't do it anymore. But we are not a brand that if you increase the price tomorrow, that day after you get it at 20 rupee discount. It is, the concept is called EDLP, everyday low price. Yeah, there's a concept of EDLP. I mean, in India, we are putting the price as a manufacturer, so we are, we are uh, liable for the price. But if you go in the rest of the world, the retailer would, the price, would put the price on the back. So you either have a concept that you put a higher price, and every one month, every two months, you put a promotion price, and you go up again, or you do an EDLP, everyday low price, which the consumer learns, I trust this. And that's what we do. And for us, that's the most strongest factor. Yeah? So now, I'll be cut uh, uh, yeah? Thank you so much. Yeah. I would now request uh, Mr. Biswajit Samal, he's the head marketing for Volkswagen Passengers Cars, to please come and join me on stage. And to please give Sir a token of appreciation for joining us here. Gentlemen, in the meanwhile, please do not forget to tweet using hashtag E4MIBC. We have a surprise gift for you at the end of the day. The most interesting tweet is going to win a...